Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem, cash with time limit. We spent yesterday in callback hell, but today we're going to see the value of callbacks. We are told to write a cache where basically we have key value pairs, just like normal caches. And we also have, in this case, some time expiration, where after some period of time, which is specified in the parameter as the duration uh, variable, after that period of time, the key value pair should no longer be valid, so we can clean that up. As you might guess, this is a good opportunity for some asynchronous programming. That said, I think this problem actually can also be solved without asynchronous programming. And I think there's actually another leak code problem which asks you to pretty much do the same thing, time-based key value store. I've actually solved that problem before in Python if you want to check it out. And that's why today I'm really going to be focusing on the asynchronous part. But let's go ahead and just jump straight into the code. And before we actually start writing anything, let's take a quick look at the example. This is how our class or object is going to be used. We're going to instantiate it with the new keyword, just like normal objects. We're going to set some value. Well, this is the key, this is the value, and this is the duration. It returns false because this key was not already stored in the cache. If it was already stored in the cache, we would return true in that case. And when we try to get the value, which this second line of code is executed pretty much immediately, it doesn't wait one second to do that, we do get the correct value 42. And when we count it, we count the number of keys that have not expired in the cache. So as a JavaScript beginner, you might think, why are we using the new keyword here, time limited cache, sure, it's supposed to return an object, I guess, but it's just a function. What does it mean to use the new keyword here? Well, let me quickly show you. And as always, let's use an example. I'm going to write a function here, dog, which let's say accepts some parameter. This is supposed to act like a constructor. And I'm going to use the this keyword and create an attribute called name, which is going to be set to whatever is passed in. So this is supposed to act like a constructor. And we know that because it's using the this keyword, this creates a property for the dog object when we instantiate it with the new keyword like this. And let's say bard is the name. That's a really good name, right? Don't you think? So dog one is going to be equal to that. And when we try to console log this dog and we try to access the name, it runs as you would expect, we get barred. But what if we try to instantiate another dog, dog two, and let's call him a uh, Cooper. And we try to now instantiate that dog two's name and actually meant to do that without the new keyword. Let's see now what happens to dog two. Running it, we get an error because when you wanna use the this keyword, in a function which is supposed to instantiate an object, we have to call that function with the new keyword. Now you might be thinking, you're more used to using the new keyword with classes, and actually, yes, JavaScript supports that as well, and it supports the constructor, which you might be used to, and it's just called the constructor in JavaScript, and it can be passed in a name, and then we can set the name like this, and when we run this, we now see this actually does work as expected when we do instantiate it with the new keyword. Instead of doing it like this, you can kind of do it a slightly more traditional way, I guess slightly more Java way, where we can declare the parameter up here. Notice how when we do that, we don't use let, we don't use var, we don't even use const. If you want to make it read only, you have to do that with the read only keyword. So we're pretty much done here. Let's get back to the problem. Now, first, I'm going to solve this problem using the more traditional JavaScript approach, and then we'll solve it using classes. There's not a huge difference. Basically, we're setting the functions out here. We could also have set them within this function as well. But in JavaScript, you can use the prototype chain to add methods to a class, or rather in this case, this is a function, but it acts kind of like a class. But I won't go super deep into prototypes in this video. Maybe we'll get a chance in future videos. But now for the actual logic of this problem. Firstly, what kind of data structure should we use to have a key value pair? Well, probably something like a hash map. In JavaScript, you can actually just use like a object to do that. And you can probably solve this problem doing that. But the downside is when you get the number of keys in an object in JavaScript, you kind of have to iterate through the entire object. And it's easier just to use the actual built in map class. Now you might be thinking, is that cheating? Because that's what we're trying to implement here. Yeah, but the logic of this problem is implementing the time expiration functionality. So I don't think it's cheating. So knowing that we can actually fill in count pretty easily the number of non expired keys. So we're going to do that just by saying return 
this dot cache dot size. And if we're going to implement it this way, we better make sure that there aren't any expired keys in our cache at any point in time. So normally we could just iterate through the entire cache and remove all of the expired keys before we return the count, but there's an actual easier way to do it with callbacks. And you might guess probably set timeout is going to be needed. And in this callback, which we're going to execute, we're going to remove the key that's passed in here. And we're going to do that after whatever duration was specified for us. Okay. But before that, let's actually just go ahead and add the key pretty easy because we're just using a map in the first place. So cache dot set this key to this value and getting is just as simple. We can just say if this dot cache has this key inside of it, go ahead and return this dot cache dot get the key. And if it doesn't have the key, they're telling us to just return negative one by default. If you're new to this C style language, JavaScript is considered, I think, a C style language, like in terms of syntax, you might be new to this. Basically, when we just have a single line inside of an if statement, we can omit these curly braces. So we, normally we would write this, but we don't have to because we just have a single line. So we can actually just get rid of those. Okay, but there is a bit of a problem and it has to do with the set function. That's always the complicated part. And it basically is that if a key already exists, we want to return true. And if it doesn't already exist, we want to return false. So let's just get the key. Let's say cache.get key. We're getting the value rather. So here, this will tell us if the key already exists. Now you might be thinking we could have used this hash dot has for that, but we are using get for a reason. And I'll tell you why in a second. But if already exists, then maybe we can set some value to true. And then out here, we can return that value. And if this doesn't already exist, then we can return false. And we actually don't even need a separate flag for that. We can use this already exists variable and convert it to a Boolean, which I believe will act to convert this to a Boolean the same way if statements do. So as long as this is not null, undefined, zero, et cetera, then this should work. Well, hold on. You might be thinking again, aren't we allowed to set a zero value in this cache? You're right. So technically this code kind of has a bug, but I'll tell you the reason I'm doing it this way is because this value we're not just going to be setting this value. We're actually going to be passing in an object here, but let me tell you exactly why. Let's say we store some key value in our cache over on the right. Let's say the key value is one and I'm mapping it to something like hello. And let's say after some period of time, while this is still in the cache, it hasn't expired. Then I want to map one to some other string by. Okay, that's easy enough. We can overwrite the value. That's what they told us to do. But hold on this set timeout. If maybe here we passed in uh, like 1000 milliseconds and then next we call this some period of time later, but maybe we passed in 2000 milliseconds. We want this to be expired way later. This call pack is still going to execute and it's still going to remove from our cache and we don't want that. So anytime we overwrite a value like the second insertion, we should probably clear the previous timeout. So when we call set timeout, let's make sure that we actually store the timeout ID. And that also reminds me, we didn't actually implement the set timeout. So let's implement that here. That should be easy enough to remove. We can just call this dot cache dot remove using whatever the key value was. When would we want to clear the timeout? If we find the key already exists. So in here, let's clear the timeout and let's clean this up a tad bit. Well, how can we clear the timeout? We need to save that timeout ID somewhere. We could, I guess, use a separate data structure to do that. Maybe even a second map. We can also just reuse this single map. And I think that's going to be a bit easier. So I'm going to take this line where we're doing the insertion and move it after the timeout ID because we're going to need that timeout ID. And here, instead of inserting a value, I'm going to insert an object where the key is going to be value and the value is going to be whatever the variable happened to be. So here you could rewrite it with a string if you want to. And then you could also add the timeout ID and then map it to 
timeout ID, but this itself can be actually rewritten a more concise way. When you're using the same variable as the key, as you are with the value, you can rewrite it with this shorthand, just like the variable name. So in this case, this will create an object here where the key is value and the value will be whatever the contents of that variable happens to be. So great, we're storing the value now and the timeout ID. And before I forget, let's actually revise our get function now because we know get is actually going to return an object which has the value field, which is what we actually want to return here. And then going back up here, when we get already exists, now we know for sure this will never evaluate to false as long as the object is not null. It doesn't matter if we inserted a zero value here, that's okay, the object isn't null. That's the important part. So here we use clear timeout with already exists and we want the timeout ID field. And I'll clean this up a tad bit. This is the entire code doing it like the function way. And before I run this, there's a small bug. We don't use remove to remove from a cache or from a map in JavaScript. We use the delete method. And unfortunately the error messages on leak code don't give you any sort of hints for some reason, even though in JavaScript usually does give you decent hints, but let's now run this to make sure that it works. And as you can see, yes, it does but now let's convert this to class syntax which is much more modern and i prefer it a lot because it's actually similar to other languages i don't enjoy the pain of writing code or rather javascript like this but the functionality is going to be almost identical we're going to create a class with this same name time limited cache and like i said the constructor is usually used to initialize variables and pass in parameters but we don't really need to pass in anything to the constructor we're not doing that here either so we don't need a constructor we just need to set the cache field to map. But remember, we don't use the this keyword in class syntax. So just do that. And when you define functions in a class, you also don't use the function keyword. This is pretty fun, isn't it? So with set, when we wanted to find a function like this, we do it without the function keyword. But other than that, we can probably copy and paste this. I'm going to go ahead and do exactly that and clean up some of the indenting. So we can probably now get rid of this constructor and we can probably get rid of the set function that we wrote. Now let's also get the get function. I'm gonna copy and paste this and then get rid of that. Here we wanna add the second method, just like we did up above. So getting rid of the function keyword and cleaning up the indentation. And lastly, do the same for count. I'm gonna cut and paste that and we're nearly done now. I'm gonna take a quick skim and see if we actually need to update anything, but thankfully properties are still accessed with the, this keyword. So I think we're pretty good. Let's go ahead and run this to make sure that it works. And as you can see, yes, it does. And it's pretty efficient. If you found this helpful, please like and subscribe. If you're preparing for coding interviews, check out neatcode.io. It has a ton of free resources to help you prepare. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.